Hello, and welcome to Principles of Macroeconomics, Module 2.2. Today we'll be talking about the cost of living, the CPI index, and inflation. One of the ways that we can gauge what's happening in our economy is trying to understand what's happening with prices, and therefore inflation, overall. One of the measures that we use to understand what's happening with prices is called the Consumer Price Index. A price index allows us to make a general statement about what's happening with prices overall in the economy. Now, we know that we produce many different goods and services in an economy, and all of those goods and services have a different price associated with them. Over the course of a year or a few years, some prices might rise, some prices might fall, and some prices might stay the same. So a price index allows us to make a generalized statement, and it provides us with a snapshot of what's happening with prices in general in the economy. One of the price indices that economists use very frequently is called the Consumer Price Index. And the Consumer Price Index gives us a snapshot of the cost of living for a typical consumer. Today we're going to be talking about how do we calculate this Consumer Price Index. Well, the first thing that we need to do is to fix a basket of goods. So for the Consumer Price Index, we look at what does the typical consumer consume? We gauge how much of a of each good that the consumer consumes, and we fix the quantity of goods in that basket. Secondly, we look at the prices of those goods. So we allow the quantity to stay the same, the basket, and we allow the prices to change. Next, we want to calculate the cost of this basket. So we take the prices of each of the goods in the basket, multiplied by the fixed quantities in this basket, and we add up the costs across all of the goods that are part of the basket we want to be able to calculate the CPI. So we take the cost of the basket in each of the years and divide it by the cost of the basket in a base year. Multiply that by 100 and that gives us the CPI index. Now from the CPI, if we want to calculate inflation, we simply take the percentage change of the CPI from one year to the next. Let's work through an example to make this a little bit clearer. So let's take an economy that produces and consumes two goods. The typical consumer is going to consume 10 pounds of beef and 20 pounds of chicken in this economy. In our basket, these quantities are going to stay constant. But again, we are going to allow the prices to change each year. If you want to work through this example on your own, please feel free to pause the video now try to answer the questions, and then continue on with the video as I explain the answers. Okay, so we have beef and chicken, 10 pounds of beef, 20 pounds of chicken. Those quantities are gonna stay the same. As you can see from the table, we have three different years, 2011, 2012, and 2013. For each of the years, we see that the prices of beef and the prices of chicken are going to change. So based on the formulas that we just discussed, we want to be able to calculate the CPI index and calculate the inflation rate. So what do we have to do first? First, we have to calculate the cost of the basket. So the quantities stay the same. They stay constant in each of the years. 10 pounds of beef, 20 pounds of chicken. And we multiply those quantities by the prices of each good in each of the years. So that we get the cost of the basket to be 120 in 2011, 150 in 2012, and 100, sorry, 210 in 2012. So now that we have the quantities fixed and the price is changing each year, we multiply price times quantity for beef and price times quantity for chicken. We add up the cost of chicken and the cost of beef so that we can get the cost of the basket. Therefore, the cost of the basket in 2011 is going to be $120. The cost of the basket in 2012 is going to be $150. And the cost of the basket in 2013 is going to be $210. Okay, so now we have the cost of the basket. Let's assign the base year to be 2011. So with the cost of the basket, we're going to take the cost of the basket in the current year and divide it by the cost of the basket in the base year. So that in 2011, the cost of the basket is going to be 120 divided by the base year, 2011, 120. We get an index of 100. 
For 2012, we take the cost of the basket in 2012, 150, divided by the cost of the basket in the base year, 2011, 120, and 150 divided by 120 multiplied by 100 is going to give us a CPI of 125. In 2013, we take the cost of the basket, which is $210, divided by the base year, which is going to be $120. 210 divided by 120 multiplied by 100 is going to give us a CPI index of 175. Well, what is an index? Is it really telling us anything? The change in the index is what we're really going to be interested in. So if we take the percentage change in the CPI between 2011 and 2012, we are going to get an inflation rate of 25%. If we take the percentage change in the CPI from 2013 to 2000, from 2012 to 2013, this is going to give us an inflation rate of 40%. So we can see that we use the CPI index to be able to calculate the percentage change in the index, giving us an indication of what's happening with prices overall in the economy. If we see that over time the CPI index is rising, we can say that as a general statement, prices overall in the economy are rising and our economy is experiencing inflation. On the other hand, if we see that the CPI index is decreasing over time, we can see and make a general statement that, hey, prices overall are falling in the economy and we are experiencing negative inflation. Negative inflation is what we call deflation. And though it might seem like a great thing for prices to be falling, it can actually be quite detrimental to the economy. And we'll talk about that in greater detail when we start talking about uh, dynamics of the overall aggregate economy. Okay, so what is in the typical CPI basket uh, when it is calculated for an economy? Well, the biggest share is going to be the housing expenditure for households. About 40% of what typical consumers spend their money on is going to be on housing, either their mortgage or rental or some place for them to stay. Part of this is also going to be food, transportation, education, apparel, and the typical things that you would think of people, uh, that people consume on an everyday basis. Now, there are some problems with the way that we calculate the CPI index. One of them is what we call the substitution bias. When a typical consumer sees that a good that they normally consume becomes more expensive, usually they'll end up substituting what they spend their money on instead of on that more expensive good buy something that's a little bit cheaper, but still satisfies the same needs and wants. Now, because the CPI keeps the quantity of goods in the basket constant, it is not able to account for the fact that people will substitute their consumption, and instead of buying the more expensive good, buy a similar but less expensive good in its place. Therefore, sometimes the CPI can actually overstate the inflation. Another problem is unmeasured quality changes. Sometimes we see that products continue to be, uh, increase in quality, become better and better with each innovation. And though we cannot necessarily put a dollar value on exactly how those quality changes improve the lives of consumers, we know that they do. And therefore, since we can't necessarily put a dollar figure on that, it's difficult for the CPI index to take that into account. And lastly, the introduction of new goods. So if new goods are introduced into the, uh, into the economy and consumers are using them regularly, there is usually a delay in the CPI actually accounting for the consumption of those goods. So for example, the movement from using typewriters to using personal computers. For a long time, people were using typewriters instead of personal computers. As personal computers became more and more readily available and more and more people were using them, it took some time for the CPI to actually account for the use of personal computers instead of typewriters. Now, of course, we know that inflation 
is not something that we like to see. Nobody likes their cost of living to rise and nobody likes for prices to rise. But there are some specific costs associated with inflation that we need to discuss. The first is what we call menu costs. Menu costs are the actual cost for a firm to change their prices. Now you can simply think of this as if you've ever walked into a diner that has a huge menu with every type of possible food that you could imagine. Now, imagine we're in an economy where the inflation is quite high and that prices change, let's say, on a weekly basis so that that diner needs to print that giant menu every week because their costs are rising and their prices, therefore, are rising. You can imagine that that's going to be very costly for them to do that. The next type of cost associated with inflation is what we call shoe leather costs. And this is the time and effort that households and consumers spend on actually trying to counteract the effects of inflation. Many times this is represented in, mo in moving back and forth their money from the bank, going to the bank to try to pull out more money to buy the goods and services that they need. And lastly, the drop in purchasing power. As prices rise, the value of each dollar in your pocket falls. So therefore, you need to have more dollars in your pocket to buy the same goods and services. And this is one of the costs that we see in inflation. So what have we learned in this segment? Well, we've learned how to calculate the consumer price index, the CPI, one of the most fundamental measures that we use for gauging prices in the economy. We've used the CPI index to calculate inflation, and we've discussed exactly what the costs of inflation are to the typical consumer. Thank you very much for joining me in this module 2.2, the cost of living and the CPI index.